Hello everyone. I can't believe we're on talk three already. Today is going so fast. Um, over the years, we've seen the industry really mature in the realms of automated testing, allowing us to ship faster with more confidence and fewer aggressions. Our next speaker really knows the value of automated testing and wants to share her experience with you. Um, I want you all to really welcome um, Carolina from Beerhawk on what test automation can do for you. Welcome, Carolina. Thank you for the introduction. Um, thanks everyone for joining my talk. I'm really excited to be here and be talking about automation testing. So who am I? I'm Carolina. I'm a lead at Beerhawk. Um, I have a decade of experience in e-commerce testing now. I worked for um, leading um, e-commerce um, businesses in Europe. I am a passionate um, quality advocate. I believe that um, I believe in building the quality um, rather than just testing. And I think that's a um, joint team effort. So um, before I talk you through the um, tools that are available in the market, um, I just want to touch on testing. Um, testing has changed beyond recognition in recent years. Um, it's not just the last step before product goes live. It's building quality in a team from their kind of um, first steps until product goes live and then I'm um, creating automation tests to check if product, product continues to perform well. Um, we're very fortunate to have a lot of tools available in the market with Selenium leading the way open source tool um, kind of, uh, as I said, leading. Um, they have amazing um, community online. So if you join, you'll be able to easily answer any of your issues. Um, the only thing is that you will need some um, programming knowledge to be able to set it up. Something that I want to talk more about today is Ghost Inspector. Um, that's the tool we use at Beerhawk. It's kind of a hybrid between Selenium and a recorder that you might use with um, TFS before. So going back to my main question, what can automation do for you? Um, I want to answer this question for you, if you are an agency, if you are a larger company like Acid Beerhawk and have in-house team, or if you are a small company just starting off. So automation will help you capture critical issues and single points of failure before your customers notice. This is extremely important now um, in the era of COVID-19. We see our customers being driven by the user experience. We're also seeing that um, new groups are emerging online. So we're seeing group 60 to 80 years old being more active. We, automation can help you almost eliminate downtime. And well and plan executed, and well and plan executed automated tests meaningfully reduce risk and improve your customer experience. So automation can eliminate downtime. How can you achieve this? This is the first test I've ever set up at Beerhawk. Very simple. Um, all we do here is we tell the test to go to um, our homepage and check if the, um, if the logo is present. If logo is not present, page cannot be loaded. We will be immediately um, notified about it. This test, although so simple, still um, works for us very well. If you're in an agency, you could set up this test um, for different domains. So you could have 10 clients that are tested in, in, the, same, um, in the same run. Okay, so um, at Beerhawk, we concentrated on creating fast feedback loops. So here, every 15 minutes, we run four critical tests. So we check if our customers can add item to um, card, and use PayPal as a payment method. We do the same for the um, card payment. Again, we check if homepage is up and we also check if card is present. Those tests, very simple to set up, um, deliver tremendous value to our operation. Um, we instantly alarm if any of those critical user journeys fail. So how can we um, capture more um, critical issues? This is a test um, 
where we check if customer, um, after clicking on a PayPal button, um, if they land on a PayPal URL. So here um, I'm using um, unique ID selectors, but I'm also using JavaScript. So a little bit um, more knowledge is required to set this test, but it's still very simple. So a um, couple of weeks ago, I'm sure most of you have experienced it, this happened. Called Pay PayPal experience global issues. As soon as that happened, we've been notified for Slack. Our tests are integrated with Slack, so we all immediately have been alerted about it. We've also received an email um, letting us know that you know um, one of the tests failed. Um, this has given us a unique opportunity to notify our customer services and let them know that they might expect um, a higher number of calls um, relating to PayPal issues, but also we could take time to switch off PayPal and redirect traffic to card payment. Once that all come down, we've seen tests um, passing, um, we um, turn PayPal on. Okay, um, I want to show you another really good test that we run every hour which is we check if Google Analytics are present on the site. With businesses heavily relying on Google Analytics, that test takes no time to write and delivers so much value. Another one, um, we add an item to the card from the um, category page. We do it from um, uh, PDPs, but also category pages. Um, at Beerhawk, we've made a conscious decision to use um, real stock to, to test. Um, we, we believe in mimicking user behavior to understand the errors that our users and customers might um, run into. Obviously, I know what you're going to ask. Do you get any false positives? Yes, we do. Um, about 3% um, are due to um, items running out of stock. When planned and executed automated tests meaningfully reduce and improve um, customer experience. So um, I want to talk a little bit of numbers. This feels um, extremely meaningful to me and um, tech team at Beerhawk. So um, we've integrated um, automated tests. In this case, Ghost Inspector. We're looking to do it with Selenium as well um, into our um, deployment process. So every time we build um, master, um, the tests are executed. As you can see here, um, we capture 87% of issues before they go live. Um, 10 of them are false positives and 3% are missed issues. Missed issues are often um, exception scenarios. So we have someone with, you know, 3,000 pounds in a card um, trying to add multiple discounts. If we look at false positives, um, they break into out of stock being 95% and 5% um, being delay or a timeout on our um, testing environment. Uh, since implementing um, integration with um, automated tests and our build process, we've seen so many issues being captured. We can have a confidence in deploying live. So how did we do it? This is our um, Jenkins build. As you can see here, Ghost Inspector um, at the last two steps, um, they add 20 minutes, but the value that they add is tremendous. Um, if I wanted to test all the about 40 user journeys and place about 20 orders, I wouldn't be able to do it in 20 minutes. Another great thing about automated testing is that you have a unique ability to set your test location. So we, we are a UK based company. We do not ship outside UK. Um, so our um, test location is um, London. Um, also, um, you know, uh, most of our traffic comes from mobile. So what we do is we test with um, mobile um, iPhones here, because that's where that's where our traffic comes from, iPhones um, 6, 7, and 8. Another great thing about automation, automation allows you to use different browsers. Here we use Chrome, we also use Firefox. Um, so we have coverage on the most popular um, 
browsers available to our customers. Um, also, another great thing about automation, it, um, it tracks the changes in a screenshot. So if you have to check, check in a visual change, this will be a brilliant for you. If you have to check if banners are the same, it will straight away pick it up and let you know the change. It will fail if you tell it to check for that screenshot. In most of our tests, um, we put assertions of either JavaScript or checking if unique IDs are present rather than using Destil, but it's brilliant. So something else that is very important, um, automation and testing is not only um, effort of a tester or QA. It's a, a continued effort of entire team from devs to testing to POs and business owners. At Beerhawk, we, um, we recognize that need very early. We've created unique IDs, just as you can see here, QA, um, button secure checkout. So everything that is used for, for testing and to run um, my automated test has a specific selector. So people know not to change them because that might cause our tests to fail. Um, another amazing feature of automation is that you can schedule your tests. As I said before, before we, um, our tests run every hour, 15 minutes. Some critical used to run every five minutes and that's what we do during peak. So we can guarantee that we have coverage and we know before our customers that there's something wrong with our website. Uh, we've noticed that uh, we don't get many orders during the night. So uh, we managed to switch off the tests during the night um, and we only run them from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. Um, the tests we run um, every hour. Um, you can build tests differently. Um, you can have one or two, it's up to you. With a um, big um, in-house tech team, as, um, as we have at Beerhawk, we, um, we decided to use test components. So they, we've broken tests into a couple of little steps um, that we then reuse. We kind of use a method of um, Lego building. So we um, join those together. They controlled from the same place. So if test fails, um, we just um, update them in one place. There's nothing hard coded. It's very simple and easy to um, update. So as I mentioned, um, very easy setup. We do not use um, anything hard coded. It's all in the settings. We're using um, variables. So our base URL will be via hoc um, uh, main domain, or if it's for testing on a PR or staging, that will be changed. So, so essentially, every test is reusable on all environments. Um, once again, we are making a conscious decision to use real products rather than using test items. We believe that this allows us to capture more issues. And um, that's from me. Um, and I will take Q and A's. Thank you very much. Um, we have a few questions that have come in. Amazing. Um, how do you balance the amount of automated testing you do versus the time you actually spend testing? Normally in projects, automated tests is the first thing to be pushed into phase two um, or never. Um, I'm for all testing, but it seems to be a second class citizen. And that's from Carlos. Uh, thanks for the question, Carlos. It's, it's a great question. So um, I, I concentrate on automating um, kind of core functions. So if I know that we are making a change to the, um, to the card, um, I will automate the journey because it's class is critical. Anything that requires kind of human interaction and understanding if this is the right user journey, if that feels right, I will do that um, through manual testing. Yeah, um, one of the barriers I've seen in the past is getting business buy-in for automated testing. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them are seen as the, the tech team wanting to embellish. Um, what would be your advice for getting that business buy-in? Um, I feel that's something that we've done really well. Um, it's, it's showing the value. It's, it's proving that with the 
small investment, the retained value is huge. You know, um, you can add your um, stakeholders to the notifications. So every time your website is down, they will get that notification. Um, so kind of, I guess, educating and sharing that. Yeah. Um, a question from Jonathan. Um, great talk. Um, could you please tell me more about the maintenance of these tests? How long does it take on a daily or weekly basis? Uh, so um, the maintenance time is minimal because they build on the components. So unless um, there is a change in CSS selectors um, or change the user journey, I will not touch them for weeks and weeks. Um, the biggest thing I need to do with them is change the product, the product that goes out of stock. Um, could you please offer advice on what um, programming languages you might um, you might be best to start with um, to progress with Selenium and begin testing automation? Is Selenium a good place to start? Uh, yes. Um, so I would say go to Ministry of Testing, and they have a JavaScript calls them, which is free. Um, you can try Python. Um, I know that lots of people find it really useful, um, but I guess the the most meaningful thing is to um, not just learn a programming language, learn about how your website operates, um, you know, what languages the developers use, because that will help you gain the knowledge of how you, how the website works. And then that's a good kind of start to then uh, move into automation. No, thank, thank you, really useful advice. Um, I think that is all of the questions. Um, absolutely amazing talk. I know I've personally learned a lot from this. Um, I'm going to be diving on to go Ghost Inspector tomorrow. Because <laughs> um, previously we've used um, Cypress for a lot of our testing. Um, yeah. So thank you very much again, Carolina. Um, absolutely Thanks amazing so much. talk. Right, um, thank you. We are now on to a lunch break. Um, I know it's been a really hard morning um, watching all of these talks. Um, it's been absolutely incredible. Um, and I can't believe how fast it's gone. So we are going to be back at 10 past one um, with progressive web apps for today by Drew Garrett from JH, one of my colleagues. Um, so all go and enjoy your lunch. Um, it's been an incredible morning and I'll see you all soon. Thank you. And thank you again, Caroline.